was angry. My boss pushed me to the limit for the last time. You know, like the blood just runs to your head, right? Like you start to get, I know I was probably red because he thought something was gonna happen and I lost it. I lost it. Hi, I'm Patrick Bellari. I was named one of the youngest titans in my space. A few years later, I was ready to murder my boss. I went against conventional wisdom and did what most people would consider really stupid. I ran away from a $122 billion company to do one thing, sell on Amazon. Back in my corporate job, I got to do some very amazing experiences. I got to travel the world. First class travel ever, five, six star hotels. Puerto Rico, Italy, Germany, you name it, I've been there. And it got to my head. So I never forget, I'm sitting on a yacht in Miami and I'm looking around, it should feel great. It should feel great. Then you start to look around and you realize it's fake. I can't pay for this. Other people were paying for it. And I never felt like such shit in my life. I was starting to turn into the toxic person that that company was. In order to perform at such a high level in corporate America, you have to work 14, 16 hour days. If you wanna advance yourself and become somebody, as they like to say, you have to do that. Otherwise, you'll fall in with the rest of everyone else. And it took over my life. I'd get home from work, six o'clock, eat something, open the computer back up and work, sometimes till two o'clock in the morning. And nothing felt worse than when I was pulled into HR because someone felt that sending out emails at 2 a.m. was bad for my health. It affected when I slept, how I slept, and where I slept. Every other night, I'd pass out on the couch. A lot of people think that big companies offer job security. The reality of that couldn't be more false. If you have a company with five people and lose one person, you just lost 20% of the workforce. If you have a company with 100 people, you're only losing 1% of the workforce. You are a number at that company. You're not secure in corporate America. So after all this hard work, after building this business for this company, the day my boss had a bad day, he completely just shamed me and humiliated me in front of about 40 of my subordinates. And then one day, when I was minding my own business, working diligently, the head of HR, the Grim Reaper, calls me and I get suspended for a month without pay. During my suspension, I realized that sometimes someone's lowest moments are their biggest opportunities. My mind shifted from I can't stand my life to I'm gonna do something about it. So I started to do some research and I heard about this crazy opportunity to make money selling on Amazon. And fidget spinners were selling like hotcakes. So popular, they dominate Amazon's bestseller list. A gold mine, I was selling a thousand pieces a day. And then in 2016, they hit a brick wall. There have been some school districts around the country that have banned fidget spinners. When I could no longer purchase the spinners because the demand went away, I had an obligation to fulfill. And I suddenly owed my suppliers $150,000. As I got more and more obsessed with selling more products on Amazon, I scoured YouTube, I tried to find more information. And I came across this, this orange-haired guy with a green background, with a bad camera. When you are dependent on someone else to pay your bills, the only time you get paid is when you work. And when you stop working, you don't get paid. I found just one dime. I met Seth in Vegas at his conference. It's helped me tremendously grow my business. I might know business, but I didn't know Amazon business yet. And just one dime helped me understand that. So after human resources cleared me of this suspension, it still didn't matter because every single night after that, I was obsessed. I rushed home just to work on my Amazon business. As I started to research new products and scour the universe, I asked myself one question. What need am I solving? Even though there were so many products that I worked diligently to build up those private label brands, now it mattered more, so I had to be more honest with myself. And I realized that 20% of my products were driving 80% of my revenue. And even though some of them were selling really well, they weren't worth selling because I was not making enough margin on them. So I started to pay more attention to the copy I was writing and try to drive emotion. So write copy that would either make people cry or laugh, sometimes both. I'd go into retail stores and observe customer behavior. And that customer behavior would be duplicated within my images. 
I started building household brands. It's empowering. I was on track to make four million in revenue. And I had one of the scariest decisions to make. I had to fire my boss. So I called my dad and, and I told him I wanted to leave my job. And my dad said, why would you want to do that? You love your job. I told him, I, I don't. I don't anymore. It's, it's, I'm living a lie. I'm dying inside because of this job. And then he listened to me and he said he, he trusts me. I'm smart. I got to where I am. And he told me to follow my heart. So I did. That day finally came, my last day. I made that company agree to not walk me out because that's what they like to do. It's a game that they play. They like to embarrass their employees. Either they quit or get fired. They will walk you out that building. And let me tell you something. I'm nobody's bitch. I walked myself out. Hi, I'm Patrick. So I did what conventional wisdom would call stupid. I left a century old company that does 122 billion of annual revenue. In the last 12 months, I've made over $16 million in revenue at 40% margin selling on Amazon. That's some serious shit. First, I audited my Amazon business. You audited it? Audited it. Orange. <laughs> I love it. Coffee. Coffee. 